Here it is. You guys asked and I delivered. This is my 100 days playthrough of me doing Minecraft. Well, I didn't do Minecraft, literally. Like, well, just shut up. Let's get this started. Day one, I started chopping down some trees and then crafting some basic necessities while I slowly remembered how to play this game. There we go. Sticks, planks, and a pickaxe. That should do for now. I started digging straight down as every Minecraft expert would advise against and uh, I got the Stone Age achievement, meaning I could get stoned at any age. While exploring, I came across this deep cavern and I started pressing random buttons trying to remember all of the controls when I threw my uh, newly found stone axe into the lava. To finish off the day, I went ahead and crafted a furnace so I could smelt down all the ore I would never find. I did cook some beef though, so that's something. Day two, I continued my expedition on trying to find a permanent home location. On my way, I found a burning skeleton, so I figured I would put my major league gaming skills to use. While coal is nothing cool like diamonds, gold, or iron, I did farm up every bit of it that I saw because it offers some decent experience to newbies like myself. I think it goes without saying that I murdered some sheep on the way to my permanent base location because I need somewhere to rest my sorry little head at nighttime. Oh, and all also, while killing the sheep, I heard their screams echo in a nearby hole, so I headed down. And after killing this green boom boom man, I noticed that this was an old mine shaft, so maybe I could find some... <laughs> Some coal and a lot of bread. Day three, I went deeper into the mine to find some more veins of iron, and I gotta say that I was getting rich really quick. Minecraft isn't scary until you're faced with skeletons who never miss, so after killing this guy, I decided to head out. Day four, I made a boat because it seemed like my world was surrounded by nothing but vast oceans and little islands everywhere. On my travels, I found the remains of an old nether portal, so I decided to stop because I saw a chest and a block of gold, so I figured might as well see what I could gather. Gold helmet on day four? I don't think it gets much better than that. Like I said, before, I wanted to get this gold block at the top of the portal, so I started smelting some iron, that way I could make an iron pickaxe and then be able to gather it. But unfortunately, nighttime rolled around too quick, so I placed down my bed because it was night night time. Ah yes, those sweet, sweet iron tools. Time to get that gold. After finishing up with the nether portal, I started heading north in my boat yet again. Day 5 was mostly just boat traveling. Don't believe me? Well, look at the sunset. I was trying to get some good sleep, but these drowned zombies kept waking me up, so I had to play Aquaman and put them all to rest. Day 6, I did this and almost died. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. Though my world was a little weird with the heavy ocean read, there was no shortage of caverns around me, which would be really nice later on. I don't know why this location called my name over the other 30,000 places that looked exactly the same, but I started carving out the landscape here so I could build. Day seven, my OCD got the best of me, so instead of just building a home and calling it a day, I decided to re-terrain the entire area. I had a vision. A fence would be surrounding my entire property, that way no scary monsters could get in, so one thing turned into another. After finishing the fence, I couldn't just just leave it at that, so I placed a gate down that would lead to my farm. Day 8, I returned a favor to Mother Nature by planting some trees because I chopped down way too much and oxygen is a thing. Afterwards, I took a hoe to my garden. No, you sick freaks, I'm talking about the tool in my hand. I very well may be the only YouTuber to ever have a garden before a house. I've always wanted to know what it felt like to be rich, so don't ask me why I made this gold pickaxe because it wasn't for efficiency. Day 9, I begin building the squarest of homes, but don't worry, it would eventually evolve into something much more intricate. Last makes for some pretty good windows, and I wanted to see if there was any threats outside of my base at any given time, so here it is. Day 10, I finished up my windows, but for the most part, it was a slow day because of the sheer amount of trees I had to chop down to finish my second floor. Day 11 involved exploration because I was tired of sawing at trees, but unfortunately, these skeletons were making that a little bit difficult, so after killing them, I moved forward. That is until two more showed up, and then I had to block myself in, figure out a way out of this, and uh, yeah, today was not my day. Luckily, some Something upset them and they started killing each other, which was perfect for me. Further into this cave was some lapis lazuli hiding under the water, which wasn't great right now, but in the future, it would make me very powerful. Back when I played Minecraft, there was no crossbow kids, so I decided to make one. Turned out to be absolutely garbage, but I just wanted to show it. I also created this mine right outside my base, but I dug straight into water almost immediately, so I scrapped this later on. The only footage I have for the entirety of day 12 was me staring at this tree while it rained, so enjoy. Day 13. I found my way into the mountain west of my house and I started mining everything I saw. I wanted to further explore, but I was running short on torches. So after getting those made, I was on a trip to find some diamond. <laughs> like that's gonna happen, right? Seems like so far the only thing I could find was dark tunnels with a bunch of mobs. So when in doubt in this game, just go ahead and dig yourself your own mine and you'll eventually find something that leads to something else that leads to cool areas that you... Yeah. 
<sighs> also, I never found a use for dripstone. What do you guys use this stuff for? While I said the crossbow was bad, it was at least good at killing enemies from a distance until I could get better gear. I went further into the tunnels only to find more iron and coal, which is really all I needed at this point, but I wanted to hit the jackpot and find some diamonds. What I like about the newest version in Minecraft is going underground is actually appealing now. There's cool little areas like this, though you're not finding nice materials, you're getting some cool decorations. Day 15, I mined. Like, I did a lot of mining until I got so far underground that I found deep slate, meaning that I could be near some diamonds. Potentially, you know, maybe. All right, no diamonds, but I did find redstone, which is every Minecrafter's wet dream. Uh, I was going to use it for a compass, not really any redstone builds. Day 16, I got tired of swinging my pickaxe, so I headed home to make my beloved compass, which wouldn't help me in any way because I needed a lodestone to be able to connect my compass to that lodestone. That way I would never lose my house, but... <sighs> There's a lot. I ended up harvesting my sugar cane so I could make some paper because a map was also necessary for me. Since I'm a big dumb dumb poo poo head, I didn't build my base at my spawn location, meaning that navigating through anything was super hard for me. And while it was no lodestone compass combo, it at least let me venture a little bit further from my base without getting lost. Day 17, I figured out a cool little trick I could do with the compass. While I'm running away from my base, whatever direction the needle is pointing, just run the opposite direction when I'm trying to find my home and I'll find eventually I think no 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 don't listen to me it didn't work I just used my map to get back home day 18 I mined a lot I made my way all the way down to bedrock and found some gold so I was getting somewhere and this wasn't completely useless gold doesn't make for great tools but when worn on the body you can protect yourself from pigmen and eventually I'd have to go to the nether so I kept digging and digging and digging hoping for the bet is that is that diamond? Diamond it was, and a lucky vein at that. There was four whole blocks, meaning I might be able to make something with this. Day 19, after swinging this pickaxe until my little heart couldn't handle it anymore, I found a cavern. I also almost died from this ninja-like creeper to my right, but nonetheless, I survived. That's all that matters. Unfortunately for me, there was nothing in here other than redstone skeletons and spiders, so after killing everything in sight, I started digging a path straight up from the ground because I lost where I came into this cavern. Day 20, I made myself some iron armor because for some reason all I had was a chest and boots. My gold helmets must have broke somewhere along the way from getting attacked by skeletons. I don't know. I also realized that my farm didn't have any wheat growing yet so I went out and started gathering some wheat seeds. I wish I would have remembered that chickens like wheat seeds. I could have had myself a friend. I haven't played Minecraft since they added the shipwreck so I was keeping an eye out for these pirate ships but I haven't had any luck yet. Day 21 I woke up on a mission to find a village and uh, it's crazy that I'm on day 21 and I haven't found a village yet but I did come across this snowy mountain. When heading into the cave, I saw a bright light down at the bottom and noticed that there was lava, so I might be close to something pretty decent. Ha! And that's when I noticed this. One day, I'll be rich, I swear, or so my mother tells me. I spent the rest of the day trapped at the bottom of this cave, cooking food because I was dying of hunger. I ain't got no food, but let me tell you, I got an emerald. Day 22, after a bunch of adventuring, I finally found a mine shaft. Tracks, torches, bread, seems like the common theme here, but I was determined to find something better. And I mainly found skeletons trapped in spiderwebs. Just my luck. Though I hadn't found anything worthwhile yet, I was racking up the experience and gaining major fighting skills. But above all, I was really, really lost. Day 23, I found a huge deposit of amethyst. I had no idea what to do with it, but it looked glorious. A lot of my time in this cavern was mainly spent farming up resources. That way, later on, I wouldn't have to worry about farming and I could do more fun stuff. I was about to give up and head home, but I'm glad I kept digging because I found this huge log a pet and uh, as you can see more diamond down there i will be the strongest steve in all of the lands i promise you it might take a thousand days but we'll get there day 24 i accidentally found two more blocks of diamond so needless to say i was a happy man i also figured since i was down here i might as well make some buckets take some lava home and also gather some of this obsidian and since i was all the way at the bottom of the freaking planet i did this for the rest of the day Literally. I started off day 25 by breaking down this old mine entrance that I crafted because it was a terrible thing to look at. The next thing on my list was to expand my backyard, and this fence was cutting it in half and making it way too small. For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to put a lava pit outside with trees right above it in my backyard. So later on, I may or may not have started a forest fire. 25 days later, and I finally have wheat growing, and this farm was making me happy for now, but soon it would transform into something bigger, I promise. Day 26, I wanted an enchantment 
table, so I looked at the requirements and turned out I had everything. Before I could craft it, though, I heard a blazing sound in my backyard just to find out that I, in fact, did start a forest fire, and I didn't know what to do about it. I seriously debated letting this thing run its entire course and burn down the forest, but I'm too much of a good citizen to do that, so I decided to have some empathy for Mother Nature and go get some water. Minecraft has been out for over a decade, and for some reason, the infinite water pit is still a thing, so I'm gonna utilize it, okay? After looking at my base later on in the day, I noticed that it was just too dull. There was so much brown and not enough purple. So I added some amethyst trim with a calcite touch and it looked terrible. You guys are gonna get to witness how I went from being terrible at building to actually being somewhat decent. I've never been good at building in survival games. I'm not gonna lie though, this polished deep slate is a freaking vibe. I got a bunch of torches placed in my farm because mobs were lurking in the shadows and we can't have that. Also, please correct me if I'm wrong, but plants need a light source. And when I place these torches down, I actually noticed a difference in the crop growth speed. Yeah, okay. Okay, Sizen. We finished off the day by making an enchantment table, that way I could enchant all of my tools and armor with glorious perks. Day 27, I somewhat finished my second floor, but I was feeling productive, so I figured I might as well keep going. Smelting cobblestone in a furnace gives you regular stone, and that's what I needed to make a grinder. This piece of equipment would allow me to repair and disenchant my gear, but an anvil does it better, and I didn't know that, so whatever. With that being said, it was time to waste a lot of iron to craft this anvil. I also remembered that I found some enchanted books on my travels, and I saw this flame one, which would be pretty fun on a bow. Later on in the evening, I made my nether portal smack in the middle of my base, which was a terrible idea, but I would later transfer it somewhere else. This thing was extremely loud, and pigmen were coming into my base. Time for some farming. Okay, farming over. I feel like everyone that plays Minecraft, when they first get an enchantment table, go ahead and enchant literally everything they own. And, well, that's what I did. I got nothing about of a level one perk on any of my gear, but that's because I had no bookcases surrounding my enchantment table, which will probably be triggering for some of you. Day 28, and I thought to myself, smithing table, that sounds like a cool little workbench. It's only for netherite upgrades. <laughs> and if you guys think I'm getting netherite anytime soon, you'd be sadly mistaken. Anyways, I took the entirety of the rest of this day to make my garden bigger and to place enough torches to create my own sun on planet Earth. Day 29, I noticed my trees that I planted were coming along quite well, so I said, screw the well-being of the Earth, I'm taking what's rightfully mine. Watching back through my gameplay, I'm not sure what I was thinking. I don't know if I wanted to use every block that Minecraft had to offer to build my base, but it looks as though that's what I was doing. Day 30 was terrible for my well-being. All I did was landscape and cut down trees, like a lot of trees. I kept falling short on wood, so I was over it. Capitalizing on lumber went well into day 31, and I also did a lot of re because you can't have an industrial-sized base without a lot of property. After a hard day's work, I ate some beetroot that I grew in my very own garden because I didn't yet have any animals to kill for meat. You guessed it, day 32 was more landscaping. I promise I'm gonna get to the fun stuff soon. Speaking of fun stuff, here's where I went wrong. I thought if I killed this nice llama man that the llamas would be my pets. But they got upset with me and started spitting at me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. I thought if I leashed them up and brought them into my house that they would stop eventually, right? Can you please just be my what the who are you? After realizing that the llamas were never gonna stop, I had to sadly kill them because I couldn't take it anymore. They were actually starting to deal damage to me. After coming to the realization that I wasn't worthy of friendship, I got back to landscaping because that's what loners do. Day 33, I noticed there were some pillagers outside my base and I thought they would be friendly as long as I didn't attack them, but turns out I was wrong, so I had to put all of them to an end. Clearly, I did something to upset them. There was a lot, and they were very angry. But after kindly sending them to heaven, I noticed that I had this debuff at the top right of my screen, and I still have yet to know what it does. Day 34, th there's more? Yes, there was more, and they came back a lot more vicious this time. I had to find a solution to this bad omens thing. I think this has something to do with it. After almost dying to pillagers, I noticed some cows off in the distance, and I thought to myself, yes, my first test subjects. In reality, I just wanted some friends, so I lured them back to my base, and this was the start of my empire. For the rest of the day, I placed down a lot of fences in the water at my garden and wasted a lot of materials doing so, but I wanted torches, a lot of them, like I told you. Day 35, it was time for me to make a bow and enchant it with the flame. Arrows were a little hard to come by right now because I couldn't find chickens for feathers, but I did find this little cave, so I decided let's explore yet again. At this point, I figured that the early game for me was just suiting up as much as possible, that way I could go into the nether comfortably without 
without dying. After spending some time in that cave, I realized there was nothing. So on day 36, I said, screw it. We're going to venture off far. I let the fear hold me back too long of not being able to find my base after going off on an adventure. But then I remembered that coordinates are a thing. So I wrote down my base coordinates and then headed out. Oh yeah, I also killed every animal I saw on the way to wherever I was going because food has been a problem for so long. No villages yet, but look how cool this bow is. It sets anything on fire that I shoot. Day 37, I found a huge cavern and I decided that I was gonna extensively search until I found something. There was no way I was leaving this place with nothing. Uh, m more amethyst? Okay, why not? Listen how satisfying the sound is when you break it. Since I started this playthrough, this was easily the biggest area I found yet. Each corner I took, each path I went down, there was another gigantic room for me to explore. A lot of gold and a lot of iron. No diamonds yet, but I promise I'm gonna keep searching. One day I will have a full set of diamond armor and a full set of diamond tools. Or maybe, maybe even netherite. Day 38, there was an over spawnage of creepers behind me, so I had to kill all of them, but I could have swore I saw some diamonds, so let's get these guys put down. <gasps> there is! Look at it in all of its beautifulness! I ran out of blocks to place, so I started digging for more, and then more diamonds! I, this, this just keeps happening to me! I think I'm gonna go ahead and say that blue is my new favorite color. Later in the day, when I finally made it out of the cave, I saw something in the distance and thought, a village! No, 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 this was a pillager outpost. So of course, I had no option but to go over here and kill all of the the pillagers and set these beautiful golems free. They looked sad and it made me sad. So I'm not really sure if the pillagers are bad guys. I mean, I feel like they are. And if they are, then that means I did something good for society for once. Anyways, after ending the world's population of pillagers, I went up to the top, grabbed my loot, and it was time to head home for the evening. Day 39, while out running some errands, I came across another old nether portal and I found some protection three chest armor, which was pretty nice. While I was here, I figured I would grab this crying obsidian, which I hoped did something other than look good, but it didn't. <laughs> Even though I have coordinates written down, I still got lost. And yes, I'm a little embarrassed, but I went to 863 instead of negative 863, so... That was my day. Day 40 started out with me doing a bunch of farming and house chores because I had been gone for a while and my pets were getting uh, separation anxiety, so I figured I'd stick around for a little bit. After breeding some milk makers, I made some diamond leggings with my newly found diamonds. Better armor, better survivability, happier sizing. Day 41, while out skinny dipping, I came across my very first endermen, and they don't like water, so I was able to cheese this guy. Unfortunately, I didn't get the ender eye or whatever they were called. All I got was a dirt block. Thank you, Mr. Enderman. I was still in desperate need of arrows, and arrows need flint to be able to craft, so I went on a huge gravel farm trying to get as much flint as possible, but unfortunately I didn't have fortune on my shovel, so it was very hard to come across. Luckily, one flint equals four arrows, so I ended up making 76, which was more than enough for right now. Okay, listen, listen, I'm gonna be straight up honest here. I never knew that Moo Juice removed all status ailments from your character. Bye-bye, bad omens. We shall meet again. The last thing I did on this beautiful day was enchant all of my armor. Though it wasn't good enchantments, it was better than nothing, I guess. Nighty night, guys. Day 42, I immediately got to taking down this nether portal because like I told you guys, it's extremely obnoxious. Aside from that, I still had my mind set on expanding my property. That way I could have farms for different types of animals and honestly, just to free up a lot of space. Almost two days later, day 43, I finally dug out the rest of this area and replaced it with dirt. I may not be an efficient worker, but I mean well, I promise. Day 44, I placed more fencing around my property so I could be free from talking to my neighbors because I'm an introvert and I don't like talking to people. Anyways, the rest of my day looked like this. I could have saved myself so much time if I just built some bookshelves around my enchantment table. That way I could get efficiency three or four on my shovels. Day 45 and the expansion was finally complete. So I made a little pen for my cows and got them moved over. It's quite simple. Feed them wheat, make them love each other, pop out a bunch of babies, meat farm. Uh, I'm rich. You guys remember when I told you I was going to make a bigger garden? Well, I wasn't lying. I started digging out the trenches for it. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even mean for that transition to be that smooth, but it was. Anyways, on day 46, I finished up my garden. Now it was time to plant a bunch of seeds. But before doing that, I decided it was finally time for me to remove the lava pit next to my house. <sighs> I'm sure the fire department will be happy about this one. Unfortunately, since I had a newer, bigger, and better garden, the one in my backyard that you're seeing now didn't get as much love as it should have for the rest of this playthrough, but that's fine. Now that my property was massive, there was a lot of dark spots, meaning mobs 
could spawn, so I had to go around the entire perimeter and place torches every couple of feet. And to finish off a productive day, I made this hideous mine entrance. I know, it's made of dirt. What do you want from me? The next few days were definitely tedious, and it took a lot out of me, but we'll run it through. I wanted an effective and easily accessible mine, which as you know is super time consuming, takes a lot of digging, and a copious amount of stairs. Day 48, and my progress is not as impressive as I was hoping, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. I mined so far, I got to deep slate, and there was an enderman blocking my path and kinda tormenting me. He kept disappearing, reappearing, making scary noises. I figured instead of trying to fight him with my hands, why not try to explode him? So I made some TNT, I was gonna bring it back down there and try and blow up everything. I set off the first one, ran away, hoped I wouldn't die. But no, I did not kill him. Seriously? I never knew that Minecraft could jump scare me, but it did right here. I said some bad words, but most importantly, I got the Enderman killed, so he could no longer torment me, and this one actually dropped the Eye of the Ender. Day 49, instead of finishing my mine like I should have been doing, I noticed there was diamond off in the distance, so I couldn't pass it up, I had to go get it. I headed back up to the surface to grab my obsidian, because my plan was to put my nether portal down here, where it was safe and sound, but ultimately, because pigments scared me. I got tired of being underground, so I went to the surface for some sunlight, but here we are at nighttime. Anyways, I started killing some cows for their leather, because I needed to make some bookcases like ASAP. I was able to make six, and I'm not sure if you need all 15 bookcases for the boost and enchanting, but it was a step in the right direction. Here we are on day 50, halfway through 100 days, and I hate the purple. So I'm gonna break all of this down real quick. But quickly, while I'm doing that, I figured I would tell you guys about my merch website I just launched. If you go to iSizen.com, you can find all of my designs that I draw by hand. Yes, you heard me right. I draw all of my designs, and it takes me a long time. So I'd appreciate, even if you guys didn't buy anything, if you went and checked out the website. I love you all, thank you. After every ounce of purple was gone, I started working on my third story, which was odd because I didn't even finish my second story, but I would later utilize this. I also crafted a bunch of lanterns because I wanted to ice out my base, and what better way to do it than some metal lights? I figured at this point, I would let my building skills evolve and kind of just take over. I was tired of looking at a square base. Well, it's always gonna be square. I guess a better word for it is depth. I added depth to my base, so it looked a lot less square and it looked a little bit more. It still looks square. Ugh. When you're feeling low, just make a bunch of cow babies. Okay, I'm done, I swear. The next thing I wanted to do though was make a nice walkway to my base because, well, that adds even more depth. Must have more lanterns. Yeah. Day 52, I started kidding up as much as possible with every good piece of gear that I had because it was time for us to go into the nether. I bet you nether thought I was gonna come here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The first thing I did while being in the nether wasn't killing pigmen, it wasn't doing anything wild, it was gathering netherrack. I wanted to get as many resources as possible for more decorations. I wrote down my coordinates to the portal, and then I also built a really big landmark, that way I couldn't miss it from 10 miles away. And then I could go adventure. Day 53? Well, it seems as though I played with death. So, <laughs> I crossed lava with the crouch method. I don't really think I had a specific goal in mind when I came to the nether. It was kind of just exploring and seeing what I could find. I also found this pigman, and I started trading gold with him. The first time he gave me leather, and the second, like, five times he gave me fire charges. No fire potions, no nothing cool. Just fire charges. That was enough of the nether for one day though. I decided to head home because I got a little weird tingly feeling, so I guess that meant something bad. The tingly feeling went away pretty quick, but day 54, I headed out to the ocean to find some shipwrecks. I realized really quick that doing this would make me rich, so my goal was to hit shipwrecks all day. Do you see all this shiny stuff? Come on. Unfortunately, it took the entire day to find it. I did find this little underwater temple though, but as soon as I got close, these little explodey fish type things came towards me and it was really scary. I wasn't recording on the way home. I don't know what happened, but all I did was find this potion brewing stand at a village. That was really it. Also, for those of you who care about my agricultural life in Minecraft, this is the amount that I've farmed so far. Each one of these blocks equals nine wheat. I think I'm doing pretty good. Day 56, and I still don't know that you can use a lead to get other animals to your base other than just llamas. So here I am trying to lure these sheep all the way home. I got a black one. I got a white one. Those two mates, they make a gray one. Science! Why does Sizen need so many sheep you ask? Well, let me explain. I'm gonna take a bunch of beds into the nether, explode them, and hope I don't die so I can find ancient debris. But I can't do that right now because they need to make more babies, so in the meantime, I'll kill cows. I finally utilize the second floor of my base by placing an obnoxious amount of furnaces because I can, and also because efficiency. Day 57, all I did was mine all day. I needed resources, and it's called Minecraft for a reason, and I wanted to actually spend one full day mining out of this entire playthrough. Day 58, I got really impatient and murdered a lot of my cows so I could finish this enchantment. 
enchantment room. This might also be a noob mistake, but I was extremely low on coal, like this entire playthrough so far. So I started chopping down trees that way I could make my own because, well, there was no coal around me. I used some of my newfound wood to make storage chests that way I could better organize all of my stuff because my base was pretty sloppy. Day 59 was kind of the big day. I got some beds made up. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to get me started. Hopefully this doesn't kill me. That only did one heart of damage. Okay, I think we've got this. This went on for most of the day. I was determined to find at least one piece of ancient debris before heading home. But unfortunately, I was running low on beds, and this one was a pretty big waste because it ended in a lava pit, so I couldn't really go forward. You guys want to know what I did on day 60? I blew up more beds. That's what I did. Day 61, I headed back home because I ran out of beds, and I needed to wait on sheep to mate, so I started working on my base. This wasn't a fun process, but it needed to be done, and all of this went into day 62, reorganizing, base building, house stuff. Day 63, I did the last bit of designing I wanted to do for a while, so I put up a glass wall on my third story and then started building the roof. It's time to slaughter my little furry friends. And no, before you get any ideas, I am not discriminating against the gray ones. There's just more of them, and I need matching colors to make a bed. Day 64, I made a respectable amount of beds, and I was finally ready to go back into the nether and test my luck. Putting this much effort into getting netherite in a 100-day playthrough probably wasn't worth it. Maybe a two or three hundred days, because uh, this took up a lot of my time. Day 65, I wasn't paying attention to my health and almost died. Day 66, death by lava almost occurred. I decided I should probably take a break from all of the chaos and dig downwards because diamonds are more common at negative 58, so I figured ancient debris would be the same. And then this happened. Oh no, I just hit with The best part about all of this is you need four ancient debris to make one netherite ingots, and I've only found one over the course of three days. But I happened to get lucky, and on day 67, shortly after I found my first ancient debris, I found another. I'm getting rich. I'm getting rich tonight. There's two? I'd say that was a pretty successful run. And while I only got three ancient debris, I did run out of beds. One more would put me at four netherite scrap, which makes an ingot, and then I can have a piece of netherite gear. What can I say? I've got expensive taste. Day 68, I started off by making eight more beds because it was time to go get that last piece of ancient debris. Before going, though, I decided to put my enchantment table to use because I had that big boost from the bookcases now. And look at this gold chest piece. Hey, I'll take protection four and unbreaking three, okay? It's just gold. I get it, but... But it's better than nothing. More bookshelves, because why not? Day 69. These sheep had a really good time, let me tell you. Funny enough, day 69 was my best day ever. We got our last piece of ancient debris we needed to be able to make netherite gear. Day 70, I was trying to dig myself out of this hole I created, and I found another piece of ancient debris. I'm just the luckiest person alive. But what do you guys think? Am I going to make a, a tool, or am I going to make a, a piece of gear? Am I going to make a lodestone? What am I going to do? All jokes aside... Not gonna lie, I was really lost here. It took me a full day to get out of the freaking nether. I nearly tinkled myself. I seriously thought I was gonna be down here forever. The very first thing that I did on day 72 was smelt down my ancient debris into two netherite scraps. 13 days later, and a bunch of hard work granted me one netherite ingot. And, drum roll, what am I gonna use it on? Well, first, I had to go to bed, and then on day 73, I had to finish up my roof. Gotta keep you guys on your toes. Oh, finally. This made me never want to build again, but it's done. Eh, screw it. I might never use this netherite ingots, but I did tame some chickens. Maybe in the next video, whether it be a 200 days or a new 100 days playthrough, just hardcore, whatever it may be, I definitely need to learn how to do auto farms because... Oh, man. The amount of wood I chopped down in this playthrough is ungodly. Day 74... Okay, fine. All right, let me explain. To do a tier three enchantment, you need to be level 30. And as you can see, I was only level 24. So I really just wanted to wait until I had a way better enchanted piece of gear before using netherite on it. Also, do you see how lucky I got? Three more netherite in the course of one day. Now I can do netherite on two different things. Day 75, and I was mining a lot for more ancient debris. And uh, I got kicked out in this random spot. I had no clue where I was. So yet again, lost in the nether. Yes! Oh. Oh, finally, I found my portal. Not too sure what happened, but it seems as though I celebrated too quick because as many times as I've been to and from the nether already, I never had an issue until now. Somehow my overworld portal moved and it put me in a random cavern. So now I must dig my way out of here and find home. When I got back, I used my newly found netherite and also the last of it to make one more netherite ingot, meaning I had two now. I'm just getting ready for the comments. I'm getting ready for the comments. I'm getting ready for the comments. Yes, I made a lodestone. I got lost all 
all the time and I was tired of it. I made a freaking lodestone. It's my netherite. I can do whatever I want with it. Anyways, I placed down the lodestone, connected my compass to it, and now no matter where I was on the map, my compass would always point me in the direction of this lodestone at my base. No more getting lost ever again. You'd think the first thing I would go and do is explore since I have a lodestone now. No, I went fishing for the rest of day 77. And apparently I did the same thing on day 78. I could do anything in the world, but I choose fishing. No, no, no. In all reality, I was really just scrambling, as you can see, for those last few levels. That way I could enchant something. But seems as though I was going to have to go out and adventure to get those levels. Fine, fine. I'll do it in the morning. Day 79, I grabbed what emeralds I had because I was going to go try and find another village and trade with some villagers. Now that I was equipped with my lodestone compass, I would never get lost. And let me tell you that this was the longest adventure I've been on yet. After traveling by foot and boat for most of the day, I finally came across this ice biome, which I decided I would hole up in until morning. But first, let's check what's inside the shipwreck, because these things are awesome. My RNG is so bad. Just a bunch of iron, and then I almost died because I forgot I was in the ice biome, and I tried to swim up outside, and there was ice above my head. If you haven't gathered, I'm the worst Minecraft player in the world, but at least, at least, I didn't die. Day 80, I noticed the village off in the distance, so my heart got excited like a little puppy dog, and I sprinted for freedom. I never really put the villagers to full use and got rich off of them, but I was trying to first find one that I could profit emeralds off of instead of wasting emeralds. But the village was a bust. I wasn't rich enough to trade with any of the villagers, so I headed out. But I did find a ruined portal, and I found an enchanted golden apple. Also, like two feet away from where I just was, there was a chest underwater that held a buried treasure map, so I guess I was gonna go look for that. On the bright morning of day 81, I found the biggest pirate ship yet. But tell me, how does Creeper get into water? Man's almost took me out. One second later, I would have been gone, so. This was like the best chest I've found so far, and it's still pretty bad, so I don't know if it's supposed to be like this or if I'm terribly unlucky. Whoa, is that the jungle? This place is beautiful. Bamboo, 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 bamboo. Oh my goodness, another village! It would seem as though some golden apples are in my future. Luckily, I found this farmer villager who was making things super easy for me. All he wanted was 20 wheat for one emerald, and as you can see, I have all the wheat in the world. And to finish off this beautiful day, I found six diamonds and a random villager chest with some golden horse armor too. In the morning of day 82, this villager was taking advantage of me, and I felt violated, but he knew that I was a gambler, so I started wasting a lot of emeralds, and uh, I left with less than I came with. I got a lot of apples though. You guys want some? I've got 86 apples. What am I gonna do with that? I don't know. Day 83, I found another village with another farmer who wanted 20 wheat for an emerald. Maybe I could profit this time. I traded with him to the point of having 26 emeralds and he wouldn't trade me anymore. But then I found a second farmer who wanted the same thing. At the end of it all, this was my loot profit. I was feeling great about myself. It was time to go home, regroup, and attack the following day. After about 10 minutes of traveling, I finally saw my beautiful land. Unfortunately, I got home late in the day, so I couldn't go back out Instead, though, I did some house chores. To finish off the day, I planted bamboo around my entire perimeter because the fence wasn't enough to hide me from my neighbors. Day 85, I placed down this green terracotta that I found at one of the villages, and it was interesting, I guess. I think, honestly, the next playthrough I do of this game, I'm gonna have to look up a building tutorial because this is just flat-out embarrassing. Okay, okay, it's time to enchant some tools. So the first thing I did was this axe. I got efficiency four, I'm breaking three. I turned around and got the same exact thing on my pickaxe. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about Minecraft. I don't know how to get any higher than that, how to get different perks, but what it came down to with this last netherite ingot, you guessed it, it was the pickaxe. I figured I would use it a lot more than the hatchet, and this seemed pretty good. Since I was on my last 15 days, I found myself staying up through most of the nights just to get some work done because I didn't want to waste any more time. Day 86, I spent most of my time cooking food and making arrows and just pretty much putting an entire kit together because my final 10 days I'd be doing something crazy. My last project I ever did on my beautiful home in this 100-day playthrough was quite ambitious. You guys probably thought it was going to be some big, intensive, complex structure. Nope, it was a bridge. This made me feel so good about myself, like I was doing something for the greater good. In reality, it, it's just a bridge. It's the small victories that make us happy, right? On the bright side, I was completely done working on my base. I had done everything I wanted to, and now it was time to do all of the dangerous stuff. Speaking of dangerous stuff, day 89 was quite frightening. I found myself a nether fortress, but I don't know if I was necessarily even ready for what I was about to find. Luckily, there wasn't many hostiles in inside the fortress, but I was finding some decent chests. A, a, a horse saddle? Isn't that like the, the rarest thing in the game? 
Not really, but like... Day 90 started off with me cheesing a wither skeleton. This guy stood no chance against me, the big bad Steve. Just because I'm a smart gamer doesn't make me a bad gamer, my friends. Always remember that. Well, two horse saddles in a row and some diamond horse armor that I'll probably never use. I'll take it. Also, this is how my first ever experience with blazes in this game went. This is easily the most comical thing that happened to me this entire time. Maybe if I build up words, get a better vantage point, and kill them from above, I can have a somewhat decent chance of breaking the spawner. I didn't stop to think that each time that sound went off, that was a blaze spawning, but there was already a lot. Oh no, what do I do? It took me a while, but I got to thinking and I was like, I can use my bed to explode the spawner. I got as close as possible. I'm not gonna lie. I was being a huge chicken. I was stuck in here for a long time But when I finally gained the guts to go outside and saw how many blazes there were I was horrified I spent another full day in this nether fortress making sure that I didn't miss anything No chests no crazy loot and there was nothing in day 95 I came across the bastion with a bunch of angry piggies I accidentally attacked one of the zombie ones and they all came after me So I had to block myself off and kill all of them. You want to see something I'm proud of? My biggest pro moment in this entire game. That could have been so much worse. This place was essentially a large maze, but I was trying to be careful as I was navigating through it to avoid any of the black coat pigs. I'm not too sure if it's supposed to be this way, but the loot in this bastion was so much better than the nether fortress. Day 96, while still in this area, I had a major scare. As you can see, I was going straight for the lava, but somehow I didn't die and I can't complain. Also, I think I broke the game because I threw three golden swords into the lava and all of the pigs went free freaking wild. Just listen to this, just listen. Anyways, I finally made it to the chest in the middle of this whole bastion and it gave me a bunch of spectral arrows. Not too sure what they did, but they were gold and they looked cool. <laughs> oh. How do I fix this? Day 97, I found the final chest in this entire place and I held a netherite scrap, which was huge. All the way at the top, there was two chests I missed, which held another netherite scrap. So two more after that and I would have another piece of netherite gear. Day 98, after getting out of the nether, I figured I would go check a few more shipwrecks because I was already out and about. I then came across another village and it seemed like all of the mobs in the area knew I was almost done with my playthrough. So they wanted like one final showdown with me. Luckily, I had this bow though, because these spectral things were actually eating me alive. Alive. I defended your town. I deserve to sleep here. Hey, 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 hey. This bed's not big enough for the both of us. In day 99, I said my farewells to all the beautiful villagers that I kept safe the previous night. Also, I'm wishing I had a lead on me so I could take one of these beautiful horses home because I have diamond horse armor. With some travel, we made it home on day 100. But before I leave you guys, I wanted to bring you through my entire base and not just so I could say goodbye to it, but so could you. This was the first time I ever seriously sat down and played my Minecraft for longer than two hours and I gotta say it's an amazing game. There's a lot undiscovered and there's still plenty for me to do but until then I think I'm gonna go ahead and breed cows and sheep. No need to fret. I'm not done with you.